everybody. It's Chuck Green. Welcome to a Under the Hood Live. Uh, we haven't done one of these in about 10 years, and uh, I'm pretty excited. Uh, obviously, I'm not doing as much travel, so I had a little bit more time, and this was a perfect opportunity to start doing a couple of these again. Uh, oop. All right, it looks like my sister Kathy finally figured out how to use Facebook. What's up, sis? Uh, <laughs> So anyhow, uh, before we get started today, uh, I just wanted to take a minute and uh, just thank everybody uh, on social media for all the crazy encouragement when we kind of talked about doing these again. Uh, I had no idea that many people used to watch the Under the Hood videos when I was a, a little less gray and maybe a couple pounds lighter. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, being an international uh, sales manager for the ADJ group, and that's not just ADJ, that's, you know, I also work with Alation, Avante, Obsidian, Netron, Magmatic, uh, you know, all the brands. Um, I have the greatest job in the world. I get, a, I get a fly around talking to people in this industry and uh, just, you know, everybody from the big concert lighting designers to the mobile DJs, and I love all of it. I love watching to see what you guys are doing with our products and um, just seeing everybody be creative. So, uh, you know, when I go around and, and people ask me about the old Under the Hood videos, I go, oh, that's, that's great, thanks, you know, but when we talked about it, doing it again, and we just got some really nice compliments online, and I wanna thank you guys for that, and uh, I'm really looking forward to doing a couple more of these, and today we're gonna do a live one. Uh, take, take a look at the focus spot. 6Z, our new flagship uh, in the Focus series. Um, but, you know, uh, as usual, let me know uh, what you'd like to see me take apart in the future. Who knows, you might see the inside of my house, you know, the way things are. So, so anyway, uh, I'm, I'm live in the, the ADJ showroom and I'm here with Candice and Jake and we're just gonna have a little fun. We're gonna take a good look at this uh, Focus Spot 6Z, so uh, let's get into it. So, First thing I want to do is just talk a little bit about the basic uh, specifications. The Focus Spot 6Z, it, like I said, it is the biggest, now most powerful in the Focus series. It, it is a 300 watt uh, cool white LED, and it is, it's, it's a bright light. I mean, it's actually a liquid cooled LED. It, it's got some liquid with some copper dust inside cooling off that uh, multi-source chip. And this, this guy gives you close to 11,000 lumens of output. I mean, that's, that's bright, you know. So this is gonna be perfect for you guys that are doing, you know, bigger events, you, you know, even just bigger wedding ceremonies, clubs, houses of worship. And I mean, speaking of houses of worship and theater, this thing, when we turn it on, it's a, it's a very quiet fixture. Uh, it's been, like I said, close to 10 years since I've done one of these videos. And while, of course, I see the insides of these lights when I'm out on the road, I opened this thing up, man. I really appreciate how this was put together. And we'll show you in a minute, but the modularity of this fixture is incredible. And it's gonna make life easier for you, whether you're replacing gobos in the field, or you know you have to do uh, regular maintenance on it. Uh, they did an amazing job putting this fixture together. So just some like general overall things. It's got two gobo wheels. Both wheels have rotatable, replaceable, indexable gobos. And we have two color wheels. Each, wheel, uh, each color wheel has seven colors plus open. One of the wheels has CTO and CTB. And then also there is a UV filter in there as well. So you can really dial the lighting in to your needs. Um, it also has a relatively high CRI for those of you that do events that end up on camera. These are gonna look fantastic. So uh, it has uh, remote focus, it has zoom. It, uh, you know, I think the zoom is 9 to 28 degrees. It has an iris. So again, for some of your school theater projects, or if you just really need to narrow down on a set piece, this fixture can do it for you. It's extremely versatile. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, take you through the menu real quick. If Candice, can we get in on this? Let me see. Did I power? Yep. <laughs> There we go. I won't go through the, the whole thing, but uh, it's a really nice full color. Can we get in there? Yep. There's my hand. Whoop. 
you can go through, just like any of our fixtures, uh, you can do the uh, personality settings, you can do the channel mode settings, you can do manual control should you want to uh, spot something uh, without using DMX control, if you just need to do a real quick, uh, there we go, so see, look, I can uh, adjust the pan. And you know, a lot of times on menus, it's really finicky to use the manual modes, but I was messing with this last night and you can really pinpoint something quickly uh, using the internal uh, manual modes. And then also you can go in and if you're using ArtNet or CleanNet, you can do all your addressing uh, in there as well. But it's a full color menu, it's really easy to use. It'll, it'll shut off when it times out so you don't have any uh, extra light blinking up there. You can also see over here, just like some of the other uh, Focus series, we now have a USB port for updates, so you don't have to worry about using an uploader or anything like that. Should there be any kind of uh, software updates, which, you know, there usually are a couple times in a fixture's life. Uh, I'm going to go back here. You can leave the camera there, Candice. I'm just going to turn this around so you can see on the back here, we've got both uh, we've got 3-pin, 5-pin, RJ45, and that again is for CleanNet and ArtNet. And then we have a locking power supply, and it also you can link out of it to other fixtures. So you can put a few of these on one circuit, making life pretty easy. You can see here, too, we have this you know, pan lock, and then we also have a tilt lock on the side. I'll show you that in a minute. So uh, this is under the hood. I usually would say, let's void the warranty, but again, this thing is so modular, I, I don't know if I'm actually voiding the warranty, but uh, let's give it a shot. So I've already kind of started here. I took off the, the side arm. So down here, you can actually see this gigantic, well, we're gonna get there. Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm making Candace run around like crazy back there. So here's our pan motor. Here's our pan uh, and tilt uh, PC, um, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, bear with me, folks. Take this guy off. We're going to start with the base. Now this part actually might void the warranty because there's really no reason for any of you to look at the base. <laughs> so down, in, down below, it's kind of hard to see, but both main power supplies are in the base there. And actually it's a very well-balanced fixture. I don't know how many of you guys have picked up a fixture and the base is like way heavy and gets all wonky, especially when you're trying to get in the truss and hang it. But uh, having the two power supplies down here actually makes it fairly pleasant to carry. You can like tilt it without, you know, being completely off balance. Or in my case, being a traveling road rep in the old days, if the fixture was way out of balance, you take a turn in the car, the whole thing would somersault. This guy sat right up the whole trip. So I am gonna go ahead and get to the fun part. And you guys, we're going to be answering questions today, so go ahead and uh, submit some. And Jake and I are going to be uh, helping you out. So going ahead to uh, take these uh, head covers off, but I have to take this one off, this side off, to get the tether undone. There's going to be a lot of screws on the floor later here, guys. So as usual, we have a, a tether on the head covers. So if you're up in the truss working, it, the, the head cover won't just fall and, well, you know. Let me, uh. So anyway, this, can we get in on there? All right. So basically, it's the top of the fixture. Like I said, it's liquid cooled. So you can see back here, this big heat sink. It's kind of like the radiator in your car. 
you know, this is a serious fixture, but this is completely sealed, so you don't ever have to worry about fluids or any of that. Don't worry, you don't have to top it off like your radiator cap or take it in for an oil change or anything. So uh, I believe up here, this is the main PC for the uh, zoom and focus. And uh, this side here is my favorite. It, I just think this is so beautiful. We have a couple modules laid out on bulkheads. And uh, as you can see, it is really packed in there. It, this thing is feature rich. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do, I guess, will be take out the uh, gobo module so we can see how you would replace your gobos. You know, I, those of you that have watched these videos back in the day, I would have to like, unscrew like a, a PC board and then like take another piece of metal off and have three kinds of Allen wrenches or, or whatever. And now it's just, it's crazy how uh, nice and easy they make this for us. Let me just have to undo a couple connections. Let me get on this side. I have to undo the thumb screws here and There we go. Oops, I got a little, my wiring harness caught there. There we go. So, let me see, I can come around here. This, this whole module right here. Oops, I got a phone call. Maybe I should shut my phone off. All right, I'll call you later, mom. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, this is the color and gobo module. Can we get, I'll, I'll hold it straight, Candace, there you go. So you can see these are the two dicro wheels we have. Like I said, there's seven colors plus open on each wheel. Uh, you can also see, look at all the motors on this thing. I mean, that's, that's great. That's some horsepower, right, Jake? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, this is what you would pull out to replace your gobo. So if you guys are on, a gig and you have the bride and grooms uh, monogram or whatever you know you would pull this guy out you would just come around to this side here pop the gobo out there's a little snap ring in there put in whatever gobo you want drop this back in and uh, you would just connect it back up and you're good to go uh, Jake what's up man but since, uh, since you're talking about the color wheel, uh, we have a question. Can you explain CTO and CTB a little bit further, please, and what that's it, useful for? Yeah, for sure. And Jake, uh, by the way, I've got Jake here. Most shows, I think, have like a house band, but I have, this is a lighting show. So I have a house lighting board op guy, and Jake has got some experience in your world. So you can chime in, too, if I'm uh, missing anything here. But yeah, so CTO, color temperature orange, and CTB, color temperature blue. Basically, if you want to warm some things up for different skin tones, you might want to throw some orange in. Or if you want to uh, cool things off, like a, you know, a cooler white, CTB, because that's the bluer end of the spectrum. Jake, in the theatrical world, uh, what, what are, what are your, what's your take on CTO and CTB? Uh, in the theatrical world, if the unit does not have CTO and CTB, uh, especially in larger theaters, uh, we're probably not going to use them as much. Right, yeah, of course. Because that, that's, especially when it comes to skin tones, mm -hmm. so, so important. Yeah. Because uh, the usually how most moving heads work, it's just super bright white LED. Yeah. And it just does not look good on skin. Right, and every skin tone is different. Every skin tone is different. Yeah. So, I mean, that is a, especially for those of you that are doing lighting at the most important day of people's lives, I would say sometimes it, you don't want the bride to look all washed out in blue or, or whatever, you want the, the skin tones to be correct. So that's, that's one of the reasons. And that kind of goes back to like CRI as well, color uh, rendering. And that, that's basically how the light shows up on camera. And this one, uh, this fixture has a CRI of around 75, which is really good at a fixture in this range. No one wants to look like they have liver failure on camera. Yeah, exactly, a little jaundice -y maybe, you yeah. know? Yeah, so, so anyway, so uh, again, Here's the module for the, uh, the color and gobo wheel. And, uh, you know, came out in seconds, but let's keep taking this thing apart, huh? All right. The other thing I kind of wanted to mention, too, is the order in which these modules go in. So 
Uh, we have down here, like I said, we have, here's the cooling system. In here is the LED. Then you have the condenser. And then we have the, uh, right here, you have this lens. This is the, the lens that will move forward and back on the track for focus. And, uh, but it's important, the optical train is the order. And so now I'm going to pull out the frost and the uh, prism module. And, you know, uh, we put the, the very last thing in this fixture is the prisms. And we have two prisms. We ha they're both six facet, but one of them's linear. And uh, one of them is just like kind of your regular prism. Jake, maybe, can you give us a sample? Absolutely. I forgot Jake's got a, a fixture fired up, ready for us to see before I pull that module out. So here's just the spot. And as you can see, that is quite an even field. And uh, oh yeah, there's our time warp gobo. Swirly, swirly, but uh, why don't you, yeah, so there's the first prism, and then uh, why don't you show them the linear, and there's the linear prism. These both rotate, and they will really help you get some good effects, but the, the fact that this is the last in the optical train means you can throw in anything and then put the prism on which really helps you, especially if you need to cover a wider space, you throw the frost on, you throw the prism on, you can get a really, uh, a really good coverage out of this. And it'll give you a little bit of movement. Sometimes you don't need that super sharp gobo moving around. Sometimes it's just more about atmosphere and you can throw it out of focus and, and just kind of create a nice little mood. So, well, Jake's kind of showing you that. I'm gonna finish pulling this, uh, uh, prism module out. It's got one wiring harness there. All right. So I don't know if we're going to be able to. Uh, oh, oh, there we go. There we go. So anyway, so yeah, here is the prism. This is the last thing before it hits uh, the main lens in the front. And then behind that, we have the frost filters. We have two frosts. We have a heavy frost and a light frost. So it gives you quite a few options. And on the back is the main PC for it. So I mean, another great thing is if, if for some reason you needed to get this serviced or if you just needed to kind of uh, do some regular maintenance like some machine grease or whatever, this thing pops right out. And if, it was a, if you knew you had an issue with its module, you wouldn't have to send in the whole fixture. You could just send the module in. It also kind of reminds me of when I go to the optometrist and they're like, number seven, yep, eight, no, seven, yep, okay. Sorry, I'm, or you can make a smiley face with it too. So, anyhow, now you can really have a good look of the chassis with just what's left of the optical train. There we go. So. You can see down here, I mean, I love pre uh, precision machinery and you, you know, you can see right in here, this is on a really nice little track. And so you, on this side, you have the uh, zoom motor, on this side, you have the focus motor. And uh, you know, everything's really straightforward. You have a brushless fan in the back here, then you have another fan on top. I mean, this thing is loaded with motors. Uh, it, it is just such an impressive fixture. And again, everything being done on bulkheads, this makes maintenance a lot quicker. It makes cleaning the fixtures. And, you know, I may not have to be so preachy with the, the production guys, but some of you mobile entertainers out there, for years I've been telling you, clean your fixtures out. Right, Jake? Mm -hmm. <laughs> a happy fixture is a clean fixture. You know, we've all... A lot of us have been spending a lot of time washing our hands every 10 minutes these days. You can uh, clean your fixture maybe once or twice a month. So, uh, oh, we got another question or? No, I'm just commenting. Never uh, go to a bar and look up. Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh, I've had, um, I've had you know, several incidences and places that will remain nameless when they said, hey, you got to get down here. My fixture's not working. And, and I get down there and it's hanging 10 feet above a uh, well fondue pot so it's just steam going into the fixture all day and then dust sticking to it and i said yeah i think i know what the issue is okay here's an actual question uh -huh. uh, and bef what is the weight before you took everything out of it <laughs> 23 pounds 23 pounds yeah it's, it's a probably a lot lighter now then yeah 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 oh yeah <laughs> 
Yeah, 23 pounds. So, so anyhow, uh, let's see, uh, Jake, why don't, can, why don't you show us some of the effects you put together? Because earlier today he was showing me some of the gobo morphing and, uh, you know, maybe we'll go through the gobos too because I kind of skipped over that earlier. So you want to go over some gobos? Yeah, let's go over the gobos. So uh, this is the first wheel. Let me focus okay. That on that for you. Yep. Again, that's the time warp one. I think literally you can travel in time with this gobo when used correctly. Yes, of course. Okay. Okay. Well, I might go ahead and go to 2021. I'll see you guys later. On the other side. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice breakup pattern. Uh, you guys use those quite a bit in theater, right? Oh, very much. Yeah. A lot breakup patterns are so useful, and I'll, I'll comment on that on my theatrical live stream why that's so important. That's too. right. Make sure you guys check out Jake. So there's the flower power one. I like that one. I'm an avid gardener. The flower power right here. Um, so a cool thing about having two gobo wheels, you could do gobo morphing. This yeah. one is super powerful when it comes to animated effects. Oh, cool. This one you can create some super good looks. Nice. Oh, we got the old tunnel beam. We all like mm -hmm. that. When you get a little bit of fog, the aerial on that is amazing. That, that's another one that looks Robot really good Cyclops. in fog. <laughs> Robot Cyclops. Branded. Yes. That's my favorite Radiohead album, by the way. <laughs> Robot Cyclops. Is that one? No? Okay. That's cool. A lot of these are really great when you have fog and you're creating aerial mm -hmm. effects. So this is a second wheel. Oh, I like this one. So this is the dichroic four color glass split yeah. gobo we put in the four, I'm sorry, in the five and the six Z. Mm -hmm. So the, again. It's very uh, shagadelic, if you will. Very, very. So now we're going to step oh, into Oh yeah, the what do you call this one? Crop circles? Yeah, crop yeah, circles. Yeah, nice. And again, this is on its own wheel, lots of motors, so this can be rotated separately. Yep. I mean, that's the cool thing. Usually moving heads have one rotating wheel and one static wheel. This guy has two rotating, indexable, uh, replaceable gobo wheels. Mm -hmm. It's another uh, breakup pattern. I think earlier you said <laughs> this is what Pangea looked like yep. shortly after, after the Pangea. continents yep. separated. ADJ's Pangea. <laughs> yes. It's a nice uh, windmill. Classic uh, aerial cross effect. Mm -hmm. It's another fun kind of tunnel beam, but also kind of gives you a retro 60s vibe when you use the prisms with it. You can do a little morph for us. I'm going to do it right now. All right. What's a good one? Woo! And I mean, gobo morphing, talk about a quick way to kind of change the look of everything. Absolutely. So this is one of the gobo wheels spinning counterclockwise and the other one spinning clockwise. So it gives it a really cool yeah. animation effect and just the focus right in between the two being sharp. Yep. Careful, man. I might jump into that Stargate there. See you later, Chuck. <laughs> cool. Why don't you, uh, let's, oh, oh, the frost. Light frost. We brought in the, the light frost. Let's see what the heavy frost looks like. And it's gone. But that light frost is super powerful as well for animated effects. Yeah. Or Remember, guys, in the lighting world, you don't always have to have sharply focused gobos. They do have their place, and they look cool. But some of the times, put a little soft edge on things, it'll change the whole mood. Not to mention, less is usually more. Exactly. Exactly. Cool. Well, let's see. I'm going to... So, like I said, guys, we're just kind of getting started again. If there's anything you'd like to see me take apart in the future, in the next couple weeks, just go ahead and comment below. Uh, let us know, and I'd uh, be happy to try to take apart some stuff and void some more warranties like we used to do all the time. Uh, I really appreciate you guys tuning in today, and uh, I really just... Uh, you know, with, with these times going on, uh, I know a lot of us aren't gigging and working, but 
you know, we all love lighting, and uh, it's something we can do it, to, to brighten up the moods in our neighborhoods and our communities. I mean, even if you just go light up a building blue for our healthcare workers or, you know, light up the night sky like some of the people have been doing, you know, it really, it will really, you know, bring some joy and it'll also kind of keep us sharp on our craft, you know. So uh, let's, let's keep doing it and let's get out there and let's make the world better with lighting. Let's, let's all stay home, but let's leave the lights on. So anyhow, uh, thanks for watching. Oh, we got some more questions? Yeah, let's do some oh, more questions. Oh, well, I was about to go away, but we got questions. Um, we have a question about user presets. Okay. Uh, can I, can, the, uh, Nils asks, can I load my standard settings, channel mode, and other settings fast? Are you talking about how you get into the menu and go between user modes? You can go in and change the uh, personalities in the menu, is that? I think that's what he's talking yes. about. Yeah, you can go right in and, and change it uh, uh, very easily right on the full color display. Uh, we want to make sure that you call your mom back as well. <laughs> I will. Mom, don't worry, I'll call her back. She's not going anywhere. She's retired. <laughs> is there anything else? I think people just want to see the fixture more as well. Cool. So you, turn it I'm on. Just gonna turn it on, and yeah. we're gonna talk about it. Uh, people specifically want to see more of the color wheel. So we got some. Look at that sessions. red. Mm -hmm. So I mean, a lot of times people will ask us why aren't we using um, like an RGB chip uh, instead of a white one, and I think that red is a perfect example why. You know, you get a when we use a nice dichroic. Uh, red gl uh, glass in front of a white, cool white uh, LED, especially one this high powered, it's not going to give you like that orangey red look. It's going to give you a real red. Yep, and there's the UV. It's kind of hard to see because we have studio lighting on right here. It's magenta. Second wheel. And you know, I'm looking at my uh, monitor here and looking at the actual light up here and talking about the CRI again, it looks exactly the same on the monitor as it does in real life here. And then there's your uh, CTO. I'm just gonna throw in some a uh, heavy frost right now. Cool. To, uh, with this CTO and CTB filter. Uh, this makes it really nice having a heavy frost in your unit because not only can you use this as a spotlight, do effects and such like that, but then you can throw that heavy frost in with the CTO or CTB yeah. and boom, you have a color corrected wash. Yep. I mean, that's the thing too, is versatility with these mm -hmm. fixtures, you know. If you're a guy that's just got four or six of these and one weekend you need to do something with a wash, it's got you covered. The next you got to spot some things, some set pieces, or if you're just doing a, uh, like a club gig, you know, you can use your uh, sharply focused gobos. But yeah, this is a beautiful wash fixture as well. You look really good on that show. Thank you. CTO, what do you know? Yeah, I mean, I need a haircut, but you know, it's kind of hard to get one right now. Me too. <laughs> uh, let's show off the iris. So let me open this back up. I've seen people do really cool stuff with the iris at weddings, whether it's they're focusing down on the ring pillow or the cake or, or, or uh, different things like that. It gives you some dramatic, but then again, too, if you want to use the iris quickly as an aerial effect during you know, a disco part of the party, then it's very effective as well. One thing I will Oop. also say uh, about these, a lot of newer ADJ fixtures in general, it feels really snappy. Yeah. Like. Oh yeah. The the fixtures. It, there's are, not even a second delay in everything. The everything in there are, feels really. They're quicker quick. than they've ever been. Part of that is too, is because they don't have to swing a big magnetic ballast around anymore. <laughs> Any more questions? Sure. Uh, people want to see the zoom range on the fixture. All right, so like I said, it is, I believe, 9 to 28 degrees. So that's zoomed in, and that's yeah. zoomed out. It's bigger than our screen. 
And this is great when you really need to cover a big surface if you want to, if you have a couple of them, and then especially if you throw a prism on, you can cover the side of a building with a few, with just a few fixtures. Can you talk about 16-bit and why it's important? Yeah, absolutely. On I mean, all things movement. Yeah, iris, it, well, I mean, anybody that's tried to hit, woof, hit a mirror ball from the other side of the room with a moving head uh, understands how important 16-bit is. It's giving you a, a much finer, smoother movement, you know, so if, you know, versus 8-bit, when you move your fader, it might just go wham that way. When you use 16, yeah, you can really fine tune it. You know, um, like I said, the further away you are from a set piece or your mirror ball or whatever, and if you're using only 8-bit to hit that, it's going to be pretty tough. 16-bit really allows you to get accurate. Anything else? Stack the iris and prism at the same time and mess with zoom. This Jeez, is, just, this is okay. a live shootout now. Yeah, Jeff. is this turning into like a... Uh, <laughs> we might need some of you guys, when, we, when everything is right in the world, you guys may have to come down to the showroom and uh, play with these yourself. Absolutely. We'd love to have you. And uh, Moy, uh, he asked, do you adjust the 8-bit and 16-bit in the menu? Can you elaborate while I'm making this effect? Well, uh, personally, I just use the, uh, the profile that gives me both 8 and 16. Because 8 still is, you know, as far as pan and tilt goes, is still, you know, important to have. Because you're not going to use 16-bit when you really need to swing it from one side of the room to the other. So usually you'll have pan, fine pan, tilt, fine tilt. And what the fine one is, is the 16-bit. You could, there's also channel modes. I yeah. believe in here that you could choose just eight. Yeah. However, we always recommend running 16 because 100%. like just like Chuck said, it's a lot smoother. Yeah. <laughs> Very serious question here. Oh boy, we got time for one more, Jake. What color, I'm sorry, uh, what beard oil do you use? <laughs> Uh, so my buddy Scott in Austin, Texas turned me on. It's called Urban Savage, I believe. Oh. Really good stuff. Shout out Urban Savage. Just doing beard endorsements or anything. And yeah, you know, working from home kind of allows for this situation to happen. So. <laughs> well, again, I appreciate you guys chiming in and, and asking questions and, and, uh, you know, like I said, let's all like try to get through this together. Let's let's get out there with our lights and create some joy in the community and the neighborhood. And you know, special shout out to all the health workers. And uh, you know, like I said, stay home, keep the lights on. Um, let me know what you guys want to see next. And I really appreciate everything and uh, the whole ADJ group. We really appreciate everyone's support. We're going to be here with you guys through this, and we want to see you next time. I'm Chuck Green. This has been Under the Hood. We'll see you.